Hi there, so this is the first session on variables in research methods as part of the research methods catch up series. In terms of what we're going to be covering in this session, we're going to take a look at what the specification says about what you need to know about variables in research methods. We're going to be distinguishing between what manipulation and control of variables means, and we're also going to give an overview of the different types of variables in research. Okie dokie, so let us start with the specification. Now here it is. So we've got variables, manipulation and control of variables, including independent, dependent, extraneous, confounding and operationalization of variables. So quite a lot of key terminology in there. Now, what I will say in relation to the exam, which is obviously the most important thing that you're all working towards, Variables in themselves are not going to appear as an essay question. Indeed, you don't get the kind of standard 16 mark questions in research methods, but they are very, very important in respect to research methods, in respect to any extended writing question. So your knowledge of them is crucial. So what we've got to do in this session is basically make sure you've got a really good understanding of each type of variable and how they feature in the design of research. So we've basically got to be really practical in terms of your knowledge. Now, a good place to start is in respect to what you already know. So we're going to take two very important variables in research, the dependent and the independent variable. And what I would like you to do is just under task one there on the worksheet, I want you to fill in in respect to those two variables what you already know. So it'd be a good idea to pause the video now. OK, so let's check the actual definitions against what you've got. So for independent variable, that's the variable that the researcher manipulates. So really important term there, manipulate related to the IV. So the point of manipulating an independent variable is, is there an assumption that we're going to make is that manipulation will have a direct effect on what it is that we're measuring. So a researcher may, for example, manipulate ages of participants, occupation of participants. The key thing being the manipulation of the independent variable is going to give us the different conditions of our research. The dependent variable is the variable that we measure. The reason being we measure the dependent variable because we expect any change in the independent variable to affect this variable. So we may measure the aggression or intelligence levels in participants. OK, so one way to kind of look at the interaction between dependent and independent variables is through the use of this diagram. So we've got at the top, the researcher aims to measure the difference in and the difference that we're going to be measuring is going to be the dependent variable, which is in this case aggression levels. And we're going to be looking at that in children under five and over five. So effectively our independent variable. So here's another one piece of research that wants to measure the difference between nurses and doctors. That's going to give us our two groups in their adrenaline levels. So that's what we're going to be measuring. Let's then take a look at an example. So we've got in an experiment examining the effect of fatigue on short term memory. There are two groups, fatigued and non fatigued. The fatigue group run for 10 minutes without stopping prior to being tested. Both groups are given a list of words to recall immediately after reading the list. OK, so what I want you just to have a think about for this one is what the independent variable and the dependent variable are likely to be in this example. So I'm just going to pause for a moment here. OK, so let's take a look. So just remember, the independent variable is what the researcher changes. The dependent variable is what they're measuring. Now, the independent variable in this example is going to be the two groups. So the fatigued group and the non fatigued group, because this is what the researcher has directly manipulated. 
The dependent variable is going to be the number of words they can recall off the list, because that's how we measure the performance there of the participants. So just remember, IV, the researcher directly manipulates, DV is what we measure. OK, so let's have a go at a little activity now. So what you can see here is this three different examples of research there on the screen. And your job is to identify the dependent and the independent variable in each piece of research. The space on the sheet net, on your sheet next to question two for you to add in those answers. So I suggest you pause the video now and then we'll go through what the answers are. Right, in respect to the dependent variable, remember that's what's being measured. So in the first one, we're measuring the sleep quality on a scale of one to 10. In the second one, we're gonna be measuring the score on the memory test. And in the third one, the measurement is reaction time of each participant. Okay, next the independent variable. Just remember, if you're struggling to remember the difference between the IV and the DV, the IV is going to be the conditions in the experiment. So the conditions in the first one are whether we're working a day shift or a night shift. In the second one, it's before or after their exams. And finally, we've got the drivers and the non-drivers for the different conditions of the IV. OK, just a couple of top tips just related to the independent and dependent variable that you will need to bear in mind. When we use the language of IV in DV, we're only talking about experimental research. The point of experimental research is to predict a cause and effect relationships. And what that means is if I change the IV, something's going to happen to the DV. A second thing to consider and this really does mess students up, is IVs and DVs do not occur in correlational studies. So in correlational studies, we're looking for relationships between what we call co-variables, not an IV and a DV. And one of the things that you may realise when you've talked about correlational research is one of the things you often say is, you know, a disadvantage is that we only look for relationships here and not cause and effect relationships. And that's because there is no IV and DV in correlational research. OK, so let's take a look at what you've learned so far. We're just going to do this on screen, so don't worry about writing anything down. You can simply hold the answers in your head and see how you get on. So all you've got to do is identify the correct answers. Now, there could be no correct answers. There might be one, two, three or four. So it's about how many there are and indeed what the correct answers are. So let's go. OK, so our first question is, which of these could be examples of dependent variables? We've got memory scores, reaction times, country and lung capacity. So you're trying to think about how many of those are correct and which they are. I'll pause for a moment. OK, let's see how you got on. There we go. So memory score is something I could measure. Reaction times is something I could measure as part of research, as is lung capacity. Now, countries, country isn't likely to be a dependent variable, so you can't change that, but it may well be an independent variable. Let's go on to the next one. OK, so this time it's which might be examples of independent variables. So we've got reaction time, verbal error score, gender and age group. Take a moment to think about this. Let's see what the answers were. There we go. So we've got gender and age. To our next one, which of these are not features of experiment? The key word there being not, always important to read the question. So we've got relationships, cause and effect, independent variable and differences. Take a moment to think about it.
Okay, so hopefully you spotted relationships there. We spoke about relationships being a feature of correlational research. Okay, now one of the things we just need to clarify is just the use of some terminology related to different types of variables. Now, one of the things it says on the specification is manipulation of variables. Now, the manipulation of variables you'll probably see is a word I've used quite a lot already. So the manipulation is related to the independent variable. It's what the researcher manipulates. So, for example, I might be looking at a memory test and I might manipulate different levels of alcohol that people are given prior to that test. Control of variables is a very important term. Control is a very important feature of science. And control is very, very important for me to ensure that the validity, specifically the internal validity of my research is protected. So, for example, if participants are carrying out a memory test, I need to control any distractions in that environment, because if I don't control, they may well have an impact on my results and that's going to affect the validity of my research. OK, well done. That's the first session on variables in research methods. Join us in the next session.